Thank you, Colton, um, for telling us about the, the geospatial component of manure shed. And up next, we're going to be looking uh, at social networks. And so thinking about the individuals that are needed for uh, functioning manure sheds. So who all needs to be involved uh, in successful transfer of nutrients from sources to sink? And manure sheds are, are managed, obviously, on a diversity of spatial scales. Uh, from the extreme local scale, where an integrated crop and livestock operation uh, distributes manure across pastures they, they own and manage, to the national scale, where complex supply chain management may be required. Um, in all these scales, actors are embedded within complex social systems and impacted by widely varying processes. So relationships outside of, of just the one between livestock and crop farmers are affecting what practices are feasible. Uh, so next we're going to, to look at some aspirational social networks for each of these scales to further dive into how actors uh, interact at these scales. Um, and don't worry about understanding the figure quite yet, uh, we'll dive in deeper. But this network shows the connections between different actors impacting manure sheds. Some of these actors are obviously more influential than others and the strength of these connections at different scales also matters. So next we're going to stay with this figure but focus in on the local on farm scale and uh, the actors that are most impacting that scale. And we consider um, manure management at the, the local scale to be coordinated either within an operation, uh, so on farm or between close neighbors, which I'll discuss more on the next slide. Uh, for livestock operations with integrated farmland, manure management can sometimes be coordinated all within the farm gate, following um, you know, best practices, producers assess uh, soil fertility and crop requirements, evaluate environmental risk, and consider factors including weather, labor, or contractor availability, um, manure storage, field access, and neighbors. Um, however, even operations with sufficient cropland to evenly distribute manure and nutrients, you know, may have experienced historical manure application um, imbalances or you know, some practices that may have led to an excess of manure in some areas, for instance, your barns or manure sources and have not met crop needs in other areas of their operation. So the, the contribution of, of cooperative extension and uh, consultants um, is, is really important at this scale to improve management. Uh, further, the engagement of specialized contractors can help to, to overcome certain labor and technological constraints facing um, the, the producers. So this figure displays the complex social system in which uh, livestock producers with integrated farmland uh, make on-farm manure management decisions. At this scale, uh, collaboration is not needed with other uh, landowners, but mostly amongst the labor force of a single operation instead, and between producers and their advisors and consultants. So here we have the core relationships, colored orange, uh, between producers, advisors, consultants, and extension, um, and the important connections colored that kind of bright lime green, and everything else, the social context or more peripheral relationships are in black. And as we go up in scale, um, more of these actors are going to become important. As you see here at the local off-farm scale, um, a lot of manure management, um, well, at this scale, at local scale, we consider that to be, uh, for off-farm, we mean within five to 20 kilometers of the, the manure source. So still local, but it is traveling off of, um, the, the at least the, the operations property. And uh, we saw in a recent study, several of the presenters today are part of, um, that we looked at large beef feedlot producers in the US and found that most operations are transporting manure within about 16 kilometers of feedlots. 
Um, obviously a big difference between this scale and the last on-farm scale um, is the, the need for connections amongst producers. Um, not that that's not important at the on-farm scale, but it's more critical when you think about manure distribution off-farm. Um, so, you know, obviously those connections are needed to facilitate manure redistribution, like those between livestock and crop uh, producers. Also, the presence of other producers and land development uh, in the surrounding area affects the amount of arable land producers have available for manure applications. Um, plus, if there's more housing and retail development happening in an area, that can spur concerns about manure odor. And of course, there are regulations protecting air, water, and soil quality that impact manure spreading. So the quantity, uh, timing method, and location of manure spreading. Um, and again, here we have the core relationships um, colored that uh, orange color, the important ones colored lime green, and everything else that social context is uh, in black. So obviously local scale manure sheds are everywhere, but this example comes to us from Denmark. Um, concern over nitrogen leaching into aquatic environments led Denmark to designate all lands as, as nitrate vulnerable zones, um, resulting in collaborative manure shed management that, that now offers us some insight into local scale actors and processes. Um, and a little bit of background on this in 1991, uh, Denmark instituted mandatory farm nitrogen quotas determined from the assimilative capacity of crops and the nitrogen content of livestock manure or commercial fertilizer. So to be in compliance, crop producers need to provide uh, detailed records to regulatory authorities on manure and commercial fertilizers produced, received, provided, and applied. Um, the regulations have uh, pushed livestock producers who were exceeding the stimulative capacity of their farmland to form partnerships with crop producers uh, needing nutrients. In this case, the more of a mandatory top-down regulation that resulted in collaboration among crop and livestock farmers. Although um, who partners with whom is obviously not mandated. So a survey of these collaborative partnerships found four different types of collaborative arrangements, business partnerships, stable partnerships, neighbor partnerships and local network partners. Um, business partnerships were mainly formed via professional networks and focus on uh, economics. Um, communication between partners is more minimal and manure is going to travel longer distances than in the other types of arrangements. Uh, stable partnerships refer to close social relationships between partners, mainly via family or close neighbors with frequent communication and um, manure traveling shorter distances. Neighbor partnerships are the most common, at least within this study, and are characterized by relatively infrequent communication with um, uh, between the entities, but um, manure also traveling shorter distances. And lastly, the local network um, partnerships are recent relationships with more frequent communication than neighbor partners and manure traveling further distances, but not quite as far as manure transfer and business partnerships. Um, notably, all partnership types, including the, the business partnerships, were mainly lo uh, local, and that about 70% of producers reported that manure traveled uh, to fields less than five kilometers away from where manure was produced. Additionally, the vast majority of producers already knew their partners prior to establishing the collaborative arrangement. So this example showcases the type of local partnerships that can be established between producers. And manure management at regional scales involves many of the same actors as local small scale manure sheds, obviously, but we're starting to kind of, you know, obviously scale upwards. Um, and the burden of forming those connections across nutrient surplus and sink areas at regional scales falls primarily upon manure processors, manure brokers, haulers, and contract manure applicators uh, for manure sheds that extend to the regional scale. Connecting livestock with crop farmers is more of a challenge than at the local scale. So word of mouth transactions um, might be insufficient as opposed to at those local scales where that's how a lot of that's happening. Um, and so independent brokers are really needed to connect livestock producers with excess manure nutrients and crop producers in need of manure fertilizer. 
uh, you know, and then once again, at a regional scale, producers are embedded in a complex social context. So the ratio of livestock to crop producers within a region impacts the, the manure shed dynamics. When there are you know, many crop producers per livestock producer, there may be competition for manure nutrients. Um, and that other study uh, that we're working on that I referenced earlier, we found several instances of large scale beef feedlot companies that, that cited that high local farmer demand was one reason that manure nutrients were not traveling further. Because the manure nutrients are perceived as a limited resource in some areas, at least uh, one prominent feedlot company chose to only arrange manure transfer to farmers that either sell them grain or have cattle fed with them. Uh, conversely, when there are few crop producers per livestock operation, manure is less valued and must either be sold by the livestock producer or hauled further away. Um, similar to local scale manure sheds, policymakers and regulations can obviously you know, directly influence manure management practices in, at regional scales. And policymakers do not you know, act within a vacuum. So the connection, that connection is going to be two way. Uh, producers, recreationists, NGOs, developers, and consumers all influence rules governing manure use. So to affect change at the scale of a regional manure shed, all the actors just mentioned and more, as you can see in this figure, need to be involved. Uh, an example of a regional scale manure shed comes to us from the Arkansas, Oklahoma area. Basically, uh, in the early 2000s, growing poultry operations in Northwestern Arkansas led the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma and the attorney general of Oklahoma to file lawsuits against Arkansas's upstream uh, poultry producers. And uh, imposition of pea management standards via a court settlement agreement required lesser rates of litter or dry manure application to farmland in the litigated watersheds. So they had to export at least 33% of the litter produced by poultry out of the litigated watersheds um, because poultry litter has a low moisture content and high nutrient content, at least per weight, a successful manure export program was created that moved over 85% of the litter produced in one of the watersheds to non-litigated areas. But this was a massive undertaking. A variety of innovations were required to improve the quality, such as the you know, sanitation and um, the nutrient density of the manure for transport and to ensure that litter could be stored on site and uh, readily used by crop farmers. And initially there were concerns that the litter export mandate would force poultry operations out of the watershed due to onerous paperwork requirements, um, the cost of exporting litter and the loss of fertilizer value of that litter. However, um, <clears throat> about $1.3 million from federal grants and matching funds along with con contributions from NGOs ensured that, that poultry operations could overcome the associated costs. Also a litter brokering program provided coordination between poultry producers, trucking companies and cropland farmers removing a majority of the, the logistical burden with much of the litter transported to farms in Eastern Arkansas, Kansas and Oklahoma. However, the export of litter from the watersheds did result in unintended collateral outcomes. And in particular, cow-calf producers in the litigated watershed lost a cheap and plentiful source of fertilizer they previously used on their pastures. And so with the continued export of poultry litter out of the litigated watershed, pasture productivity declined, leading to decreases in beef herd size and then worsening pasture conditions. Uh, despite such drawbacks, the mandated nutrient management changes achieved their intended purpose of lessening pea runoff within the Illinois River. One insight gleaned from this manure shed is the need for comprehensive engagement of manure shed actors, uh, connecting with the, the larger community to understand concerns and consider options, um, but ultimately that requires strong roles for extension, outreach, education, and research. In comparison to both local and regional manure management, transfer of nutrients from distant ends of the supply chain may require engagement by the full suite of stakeholders. So while national, national scale manure shed management does not yet exist, uh, there are ambitious efforts to concentrate manure and then distribute their nutrient resources across large areas 
including through manure to energy uh, conversion and composting. The fertilizer industry is particularly important at this scale because processing manure to be a more standardized product, uh, pelletizing and package, packaging it is one way to make transfer of manure long distances feasible. Um, So uh, as you can see, as I just kind of go through the different diagrams, the, the different networks that was local, regional, um, and this, well, sorry, if I can go back maybe. Um, so this is actually regional and that was national. You see that more connections are um, becoming orange, more core relationships are being, are, are important. And then there are more green relationships. So those that, that should be involved. Um, although all of these actors are influencing the, 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 um, how nutrients are being um, distributed across the landscape. Um, so, you know, these networks I've shown you have a nesting of core actors from on farm to continental scale and social science and how that informs who and how we engage the core actors at a given scale is critical for manure shed success, but should not exclude the potential for you know, interactions and opportunities that stem uh, from relationships with other manure shed actors. For manure shed management to work, you know, systems are required that support the conversion of these relationships into partnerships. Um, so up next, Rob will discuss how some of this plays out on the ground with an example from Pennsylvania.